Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use the on unload event to perform data validation across multiple records and provide a friendly error message when you go to close a form in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Freya in Oslo, Norway, one of my Platinum members. Freya says, I have a form where my employees enter a number of job codes for a particular project. Each job code is on a separate record. They have to enter at least five job codes, but no more than eight. Is there any way to check that before they're allowed to close the form? This is one of the tough things about my job is taking what you're doing and translating into something that everyone can relate to because you've got job codes and project IDs and I don't know what any of that means and neither do the people watching. So let me translate that. Let's say you've got a customer and they've got orders, all right? Same thing, you've got one table with a, a child table. So in your case, the project is the parent and the job codes represent the sub records or the child records, okay? So you're saying that each project, each customer can have, must have at least five orders, but no more than eight, all right? We can do this with something called the on unload event before the form closes, before whatever form you've got that they are entering in these codes, before that, before they're allowed to close that form, we're going to do a little validation. Now, if it's if it's a single field, that's easy. We could just use a validation rule, right? And if it's a single record, we could use something like the before update event. I've got separate videos on that. I'll give you links to them in just a second. But since this involves multiple records, Okay, we have to use something a little more creative. So I would choose to use the on unload event for this. Give them a form where they can enter the stuff, right? And then before they're allowed to close that form, check it. And if not, don't let them close it. We'll give them an error message and say, ah, ah, ah. You didn't say the magic word, ah, 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 right? <laughs> Jurassic Park, the whole movie would have been, would, nothing would have happened if they would have just simply paid their IT guy what he was worth, right? <laughs> Pay your computer guys, people. All right, here we go. Now, this is going to be a developer level video, which means that's right. You need to know a little bit of VBA. Now, if you've never programmed in VBA before, don't worry. It's okay. I got a video that'll teach you everything you need to know in about 20 minutes. Don't panic. Go watch this first. And also, go watch this video too. Very similar to what we're going to be showing you today. Uh, the before update record, uh, the before update event happens after you've done editing or typing in a record and before you're allowed to leave it, before you can close that record, before you can move off of it, this event runs. So you could, you could technically do this in this event too, but on onload's a different, uh, it gives me a chance to show you, put, show, put another tool in your box, right? Usually I use before update to check single record stuff, like make, you know, if you gotta check multiple fields in a single record. And while you're at it, go check out dcount too. We're gonna use dcount today to count the number of records in a particular table or query with criteria. These are all free. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website if you want to. All right, let's say we got our customer list here and, and using something along Freya's lines, let's say that we don't want to allow more than five customers in our database from Florida, okay? So before the user is allowed to close this form, we're gonna check to make sure there's five or fewer Florida people in here. You don't want too many Floridians in your whatever. There's, there's too many of us cause problems, okay. <laughs> and again, you could put this in a records before update event, but you can also put it here in the on unload. Now on unload is unique. There's on close, where are you? I can never find these guys because they're in a weird order. So I hit the little button here to sort them. And, and that's a glitch there. The button goes away. Look at that. See? Um, there's on close and there's on unload. Very similar. Let me show you the, both of them and you can see what the difference is. Here's on close. If I click on that, it generates the on close sub, right? And if I generate the on unload, look at that one. It's slightly different. See the difference there? I'll give you a hint, that bad boy. That's not really a hint, I just gave you the answer. But form close means, okay, it, it, it's shutting down, we're done, you, you can't do anything about it. It's gonna close either way, 
you might want to get you know you can do some other stuff in here but for you know on unload happens before that and you can still cancel it it's kind of like before update and after update right before update you can check some stuff and say well this isn't right y you can't leave this record yet we're not going to save it but in here we can do stuff before the user's allowed to close the form because you might want to let them you know, put in whatever records they want, and then before they close the form, check it and say, oh, wait, you got eight Floridians in there. You're only allowed five. So you're going to have to go and delete three of them, right? Uh, let's say you're making a, you know, a, a baseball roster. You got to have nine players, no more than 12 or whatever for your little league, okay? Those, these kinds of things, right? So how do we do this stuff? Well, a little bit of programming here. So dim X as along. We're going we're gonna to count up the number of Floridians, right? So X equals D count all the records from the customer table where the state equals Florida. And remember, since Florida is a string, it's inside of quotes, and those quotes are inside another string, so you have to use double, double quotes. If you haven't watched my double, double quote video yet, go watch that if you're confused. I'll put a link to it down below in the description. Okay. All right, so close that up. Now, if X is greater than five, then, and yes, in case you're curious, we could have done this without the X. We could have just said if D count, blah, blah, blah. I prefer throwing the variable into, throwing the number into a variable. It's just my style. I've been doing it forever. I don't usually like just directly checking that as part of an if statement. I don't know. It's like, I, I just, I've always considered that bad code. Plus, if this throws an error, then you get problems. All right. Anyways, so we got more than five of them. What happens? Well, there's going to be a lot of drunk people in the room, first of all. No, I'm just kidding, just kidding. All right, message box. Sorry. For safety reasons. Safety and sanitary reasons. I'm a Floridian. I can pick on other Floridians. Uh, only max five Floridians uh, allowed. Otherwise, a Jimmy Buffett concert breaks out. Okay, anyways. Uh, so now at this point, we've given the user a warning, right? You can't, you got it. Got to delete some Floridians. Okay. Then we're going to say cancel equals true. Yeah, I know it's an integer, but I always give it true and false. It's looking for zero and not zero. Okay. And if that's it, that's all you need. Like I said, it, most things you want to accomplish in access don't really require that much programming. A couple lines, three, four lines, and you're good. And we probably could have done this with just all right, save it, always throw in a little debug compile. Close it, close it, yep, open it, oh, wrong one. Okay, and that brings up another point, I opened up the wrong form. If you have multiple forms where users can add records and change things, right? We just put it in this form here, all right? But this form can also edit and add customers. So you have to put that code in both of these. And you don't wanna have the same code in both forms, so you make it in a global module out here. And then each one of these guys just calls that one. Okay. But that's all, that's a topic for a whole different uh, video. All right. So we'll just assume this is the only form you can add records in. All right. Right now I got four of them. If I close this or good. Okay. If I come in again, I, I'm used to going to this one for most of our videos. All right. If I come in here and add someone else. All right. Joe Smith from Florida. All right. We got five now. We're still good. Let me add one more. Let's just, just change someone, right? Let's say uh, Uhura moves to Florida. Okay. Close it. Oh, ah, yeah. Sorry for safety and sanitary reasons. Only five Floridians allowed. Hit okay. Now, the record's in there, right? And, uh, you know, yeah, I suppose, like, if the database crashes, then that record's going to stay because this form didn't get to do its thing. Okay. So, that, I mean, there's always, there's always issues around everything. But that, I think, is a nice, simple way to check and say, hey, you got too many Floridians in here. You have to great. Okay, sorry, Joe Smith. You got to go. You're off the team. And now I can close it. And that's it. That's how you do it. Are there other ways to handle this? Yeah, there's lots of... It's like, like I, I always use the, the Lego analogy, right? I'm just... There's a whole bunch of Legos. I'm showing you different ways to put pieces around. And, you know, this is just another tool in your box, another event that you're going to learn how to use. and come up with uh, all kinds of funny ways to, to do stuff. If you like learning this stuff, like learning some VBA, 
I take it nice and slow from the beginning. I got lots and lots of different lessons. If you like hanging out with me and learning, you like my style. Great. Awesome. Come and join class. Lots of room, plenty of seats. Check it out. There's a link. That's it, folks. That's your tech help video for today. Now get out of here. Go on. Beat it. Scram. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use 
the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.